We begin with the Miami mayor with us today for the first time since his run for president and facing questions about his actions as an elected official and your right to know about that. Days after this video was made public, the mayor reacting physically to Herald reporters recording on a cell phone at City Hall, Francis Suarez then arranged a round of local interviews of which this will be one. Some developing Miami news first. Last night, Miami commissioners, the four of them remaining, voted to keep open the District 1 seat of arrested and suspended commissioner Alex Diaz de la Portilla until voters fill it in the election in November. Diaz de la Portilla is fighting criminal accusations of selling his vote and influence. Commissioner Joe Carollo, alternatively, was recently found civilly responsible for weaponizing city code enforcement against business owners. But back to the mayor. Francis Suarez has been under scrutiny for payments and gifts from people doing business with the city and income from more than a dozen firms during his time in office. The first indications of that came only recently from required financials Suarez had a file for his run for the presidency. So today we talk about that as well as the mayor's role going forward, the functioning of a city with two fifths of its principals fighting corruption allegations and where all of this is heading for him. Mayor Francis Suarez, welcome. Thank you, Glenn. It's wonderful to be with you on a Sunday. It's not a bad day to be in City Hall working uh, with a beautiful day like this and a beautiful background. Yeah, what are you doing today there? I'm, I'm, I'm here. I'm working, I'm working for, for the people of the city of Miami talking to you. It's part of my job. Well, we are going to talk all about that, and, um, and I want to... I want to begin going forward, really, and then we'll backtrack a bit. But you're just back a month from the presidential campaign trail. You are in that position for another year before your term limited. Mayor, you have expressed such frustrations often in your tenure about how limited the role of Miami mayor is by city code. It's uh, it's veto power, but it's no vote. The commission kind of has that juice. So so what is your agenda for the next year? You know, it also doesn't have any administrative power. You know, I, I tried to change that uh, when I first got elected, uh, maybe naively, um, when I was elected uh, in 2017 by 85% of the vote, I thought I had a mandate uh, to change the system of government, to make it more accountable, uh, to give the mayor more ability to actually make decisions. And unfortunately, the voters rejected that. That's, that's the part of the democratic process. So my vision going forward is to focus on, on the issues that our residents care about. I think we're, you know, and I know the narrative around City Hall right now uh, by many is not positive, but I like to focus on the things that I think are very positive. We just lowered taxes yet again. Um, I had set the lowest tax rate in history. Now we lowered it one more time. We have a 14% growth rate. I think that's the highest growth rate in our history. We're number one in wage growth. We have the lowest unemployment in America and our homicides this year are 40% below last year, which is a per capita 1964 low. So this year we want to focus on continuing on those wins, but also focus on some of the things that our residents are struggling with. We know affordable housing uh, is a major issue in our city and across America, frankly. We have $30 million still unspent from the Miami Forever Bond. I want to make sure that that gets put to work immediately. Um, and then the, I want to work with commissioners, even though I don't have a formal role in this, in extending our CRAs, because that could create hundreds of millions of dollars more of affordable housing money. And we leverage that at somewhere between a, a 10 to 1 or 20 to 1 rate. So that could create billions of dollars of affordable housing for so, our residents. Got it. So that was, I feel like I'm listening to your stump speech. All of that, that's a great tight list. I, I want to go back to something that you said. You, um, you actually tried to pass an initiative you just mentioned as a strong mayor. That did not come to pass. But no. during that campaign, I remember you were outlining the reasons why you thought that that would be a great idea. Um, that was, what, 2018. It didn't come to pass. And you had said during that time that you were very frustrated because when residents and your constituents called you to get a pothole fixed or something like that, that they expected you to pick up the phone, call the department head and get it done. But you're not allowed to do that. You're not allowed to call any department heads. You're not allowed to take those actions and direct people, the staff in the city, to help your constituents. And I remember that was very frustrating for you. It was, and it still is. You know, obviously, all we can do is when we get a complaint that comes into our office, we do we refer uh, to the administration. The administration uh, takes whatever action they deem appropriate, or, or and we really don't have uh, any sort of recourse 
other than something very dramatic like firing the city manager, which of course I would not do because the city manager is doing a phenomenal job and you can't you can't take that kind of dramatic action when one little thing isn't done to your satisfaction. So look, that I, I respect the voters' desire. I've worked within the charter uh, to, to accomplish the goals. And I'll just say two, two quick things. One is to correct the record a little bit. I have two years left. I think you said I had one year left before I'm termed out. As of November, I have two years left. You do, 25. Left. I'm not yeah. good at math. It's okay. <laughs> You're right. I, I, most people think it's it's even number of years, so that's to be forgiven. And then uh, uh, the second part is that, you know, uh, we got to also uh, focus on flood mitigation. I know I was going through a, a list of things and you sort of it, it could get long winded, but uh, we do need to focus on flood mitigation. We have a lot of money from also the Miami Forever a bond that it still hasn't been programmed. And I want to focus my last two years to make sure that we're as resilient as possible when I leave. As we learned this weekend, that is critical. All right, I want to I want to bring you back, yeah, find back good. to something. I want to go back to constituent services because because that becomes very relevant right now because as you know, Coconut Grove developer that you were working for is under investigation now, having a boatload of problems on his own. Rishi Kapoor with Location Ventures. Uh, you have acknowledged pay being paid by him ten thousand a month for more than a year, one hundred seventy thousand dollars, and during that tenure, he called you, he met with you, he was having problems getting some zoning issue resolved, and that zoning issue was resolved by the city. So those two things, the the payments to you and the resolution of his zoning problem, I, I'd like for you to kind of connect those dots for constituents. Was that payment for getting things done in Miami? Absolutely not. Um, I, I work for him, I, like I said, I've admitted to working for him. Uh, I work for him on things unrelated to the city of Miami. In fact, there was a conflict provision uh, in the agreement which prevented him from asking for anything related to the city. Um, and I had absolutely no involvement in his approval. His approvals uh, were based on an email chain that I was not involved in. Uh, every single member of the administration, as you said, I don't have the power as mayor to solve the problem anyhow, but when you refer it, um, every single member of the administration uh, including the member of my office, did not talk to me about the issue. They've said that publicly. So this would, really you, would you be surprised to, to know that he said you did? He wrote an email October 22nd asking Laz to thank the mayor for his support and assistance. And, and also some of the internal company memos have him meeting with you, have the people involved in this project saying that, well, let's get Rishi to talk to the mayor as they were having problems. Did did you see this? Does that surprise you? Are these are, it, these, it, it, are, are these are these valid? It did surprise me, uh, and I think he even said at the time that the Miami Herald interviewed him that we did not have the meeting. In fact, uh, I think the meet, internal company records that you're referring to had the meeting of happening on August second, um, and he was in Hawaii. He showed that documentation to the Miami Herald. Uh, he showed him a picture, a, 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 a timestamp picture that he was in Hawaii. He sent him his tickets that he had left in late July and was in Hawaii till mid-August. The Miami Herald decided never to publish that. I don't know why. I wish they would have. I think that would have exculpated me. And for whatever reason, they decided not to publish it. That's their right, of course, to publish things or not publish things. But I also think it has to, you know, things have to be fair. Uh, and I think in fairness, when you discover facts that do not fit a particular narrative, you also have a journalistic obligation to publish them. You have done that in the past, Glenna. You know, there have been times where people have accused me of something. You, you know, asked me about it. I provided you facts. I provided you documentation. You decided not to publish a story because you were convinced that, that I was right and, that, and the documentation was correct. So, okay, no, fair, fair point. We're simpatico on that, but, but here is this documentation of this company and Rishi Kapoor thanking you for your help on something what what did you help them on and and helping a constituent is what you're supposed to do but but the payment for that help as an elected official you know is what's problematic to constituents so what is he thanking you for of course that would be problematic and i have absolutely by the way i'm not upset at all at the miami herald for writing an article based on I, i'm not talking about the herald at all i no, in I, fact I, the, the herald is the one who I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not upset at any media outlet for talking about it i'm here to talk about it with you i'm not upset at anyone for wanting to talk about it i think it's absolutely in bounds so what did uh, what were they thanking you for I, I have no idea what what he was thanking me for i wasn't involved in those emails i wasn't included in those emails so i was never told uh that so I, you know, again, I, I'm not, I have not been involved in any of those series of emails related to his approval. Not one. I wasn't involved in one meeting related to his approvals. 
All members of my administration have already said that publicly. This should have been a closed, uh, you know, this should have been closed a long time ago. Uh, and I've talked about it and I've answered these questions time and time again. So I'm not so sure why we continue to talk about it. But listen, I, I will continue to, to say the very same thing that I've said uh, from the get go. Okay, so um, I tell you what, let's, uh, because we're up against the clock here, let's take a quick break because there are a couple of other things I know we both want to talk about. So stay tuned. We'll be right back with the mayor. Thank you. We are back with Miami Mayor Francis Suarez, our first chat with him since he's back from the presidential campaign trail. Maybe in another show we'll talk about that experience. We got a lot to talk about. One more money question, if you will indulge us, and, uh, and then I want to get to a state of the city. But Mayor, you were elected in 2017 as mayor. You are, you are term limited. This is your second term, as we talked about before. You as mayor make $96,000 in salary. Some benefits bring it up a little bit. Um, in the six years that you've been in office, and your net worth, and this is something that elected officials make public. This is not a personal thing. This is something your constituents need to know, that in office, your net worth went from a little bit below $300,000 to more than $3 million. And our first look at your financials or what you filed with the FEC, the Federal Elections Commission, when you ran for president, uh, 15 firms or so, banks, uh, equity firms, wealth managements, who you have been consulting for for salary. Can you explain to your constituents what you do for these companies and, and have they hired you because of your position as mayor of Miami? And how much time do you spend for them and where, why do they pay you this money? Well, look, when you do disclosures, you do it for a range of time. So there are a lot of pot potential uh, uh, companies that you disclose. But right now, currently, I work for a law firm, uh, which is one of the most prestigious law firms in the world. I've been a lawyer for 20 years. Um, I've been in a public official, by the way, for 14 years, not six. Uh, and I've been a practicing uh, attorney uh, and a private sector, uh, a person who works in the private sector the entire time. Uh, many people may not know, and this is one thing I would tell our constituents, that 31 out of the 34 mayors in our county are working mayors. You have many other mayors who are lawyers, lawyers who work for contracting companies, lawyers who have small businesses. Oh, 100%. I mean, I, and, and every 100% I just, I just people that, work in the private sector. I guess, sure. I guess the question if i can sure. short circuit that is would you, these companies didn't hire you when you were not an elected official and and that's um you know that's just a red flag to people who see their mayors working in the private sector private sector companies that might benefit from their elected position that really is the crux of that Listen, I'm laughing a little bit because uh, when I wasn't an elected official, I was 30 years old. And so I had just started as a practicing lawyer. You know, I've been, uh, you know, someone who has thankfully uh, uh, progressed and had success, which is something, of course, I don't apologize for. I'm, I'm a father. You know, I'm a parent. I want to do like every uh, member of my community. I want to do the very best for my family. I'm entitled to have a private life. I'm entitled to have private employment. I'm entitled to be successful. Uh, and I'm entitled that people find value in, in, in my work and my work experience. Uh, and in my uh, background uh, and in my resume. And so that's something that I should be you know, proud of, uh, not something that I should be ashamed of. And like you said, it's something that I disclose even in the federal case at a level of every income opportunity over $5,000 in gross income. So basically every single thing that I've ever made money on, I disclose. I don't have a problem disclosing it. You know, sometimes they, I get criticized for how I disclose things. So there's a different threshold under the state that there is under the federal government. It's much stricter under the federal government. And I welcome that. When I ran for president, I knew that I was going to have to disclose all these things. And I was not in any way, shape or form afraid of it because I have nothing to hide. I disclosed it. You know, I'm successful. And, and you know, thankfully, we live in a country uh, where that's possible. One of the things that was not disclosed until very recently when it was brought up in the press was um, and in fact was under an ethics investigation which is now closed on its technicality not on its merits were a lot of the what appeared to be gifts perks uh the the world cup in Qatar with david beckham the f1 races with citadel hedge fund manager ken griffin these people of course with business in front of the city a lot of these vip experiences that you have that bubble up in these beautiful pictures on social media uh, worth thousands of dollars maybe in aggregate tens of thousands of dollars those were not disclosed and i wonder mayor if you can talk about were those 
personal appearances? Were those uh, mayoral businesses? And why not disclose the value of those gifts that you got? Well, the, the question presumes that I didn't disclose them, uh, which, of course, is not accurate. Uh, you know, I, I first of all, many people have told me that they expect me as the mayor of Miami to attend these events. Uh, I helped bring Formula One uh, to Miami over the course of multiple years. Um, and, and so it's arguably something that I would do in my official capacity. But but in the case of Formula One and in the case of uh, of, of Citadel, I paid for that <laughs> myself. And in fact, I disclosed it to a member of the media when and I didn't have to. Well, actually, I wasn't, Ke well, Ken Griffin's spokesperson said that he paid for them. No, I, I, I reimbursed him for it. So it, but what happens is I was invited. I went to the game and I reimbursed him because he was a lobbyist and I could not accept a gift from him. So there are rules related to what who you can accept gifts from, who you cannot accept gifts from. Since you cannot accept a gift from a lobbyist, I paid for it. And I disclosed it when I didn't have to because you don't have to disclose for gifts that you don't get. Right, right? but if you, you see, you, see, you, know, you know why that's problematic because I guess questions are, well, why not just pay for it in the first place? And, and if you did repay them, constituents would want to see the documentation of that. But you, you see, Mayor, why, why there are so many questions about thousands of dollars of, of gifts that you reimbursed rather than paid for, and in one case gave several different answers about the amount that you did reimburse. So there, you understand why that's a problem for an elected official answering to his constituents. No, no, Glenn, I don't. Uh, I think there are, there are laws and there are rules and you have to follow them. And so if you pay for something, it is not a gift. So therefore it does not have to be disclosed. I, would, I don't know where uh, someone maybe in the Miami Herald was confused with how I answered them when I disclosed information that was not required of me to, to disclose. I disclosed it anyways, which was the amount. And they were confused as to how much or how many days the amount paid for. Um, but that's not my uh, fault. Again, I, was, I, I really, I'm, this isn't about the Miami Herald. It's it's about an well, elected official with to, this I know, constituents. But, but if, let, me, let me just ask the question. So, it, it is the, the Citadel spokesperson who said originally who who put it out into the public that this was paid for by citadel and if you bought these tickets or reimbursed the tickets why not just buy them in the first place why not report it and and i guess the last question is were you at those races as the mayor of miami or as a private citizen so in an abundance of caution, like I said, I paid for it. Uh, and what happens is you get invited to, to something. And then, like, for example, I don't know if you remember when I went to the Heat game and, and, and it was written about as well. Uh, I was standing in the front row. I wasn't hiding from anyone. I wasn't trying to get a gift sort of, uh, you know, secretly. I sat in the front row. Uh, I watched the game. The Heat won the playoff game, okay? And then I had to disclose that as a gift, which I did. By the way, that takes time, and the law affords you an amount of time. It gives you a quarter after the quarter in which you receive the gift. And there's a reason for that. The reason is you have to figure out exactly how much it costs. So, for example, in a Miami Heat playoff game, okay, the person who gets season tickets doesn't pay individually for that game. So you have to figure out what the market value is uh, and all that. And that's what I did. I went with the highest amount possible as a gift disclosure. And I disclosed it, which I believe is in part why the Miami-Dade Ethics Commission dismissed uh, the case. And I think I think it's, it's unfair, uh, you know, for the headline not to be, you know, a mayor's ethics case dismissed. There's a corresponding case in, in the state. Uh, my hope is that it gets dismissed as well and that we can turn the page on this and focus on the things that are important for our residents. I just, I just want to understand this is actually just a factual question. I don't want you to feel like fair or unfair because what's fair for constituents is to know what their elected officials are doing and with whose money they're doing it. So, so the, the uh, World Cup in Qatar in 2022, you were there with David Beckham. You took two city taxpayer paid security with you. I'm not sure I have seen any documentation of who paid for you on that trip. Has that been filed? But that, that assumes you, that you need to see some documentation. So you see documentations under certain circumstances. Uh, the fact that I have an executive security detail um, is something that I've had. They travel with me everywhere I go. Um, you know, and that's part of the Miami. Right, department. Mayor, and I hope you enjoyed the World Cup so, for sure, but you were there with someone who's but, but, but doing that, city business. Point. That the That's point, the point. Lana, the point is that we have rules and there are uh, accountability measures when you don't follow the rules, like filing an ethics complaint. And what happened was someone who was 
a, a partisan activist filed a partisan uh, filed a a complaint against me, which they have every right to do. They're a Miami resident, apparently, and that was dismissed. And hopefully, at the state, it will be dismissed. And hopefully, we can turn the page on these questions and focus on positive things for the city of Miami, which is what we should be doing. Not where Jeff, I go. Okay. I would have. Well, just a just a point of context. It was dismissed on a technicality, not because of the merits of what that's the your, allegations. That's your perspective. I no, mean, that's that, not. My that's what the ethics commission wrote. That's I, no. The ethics commission me. wrote. That's not what they wrote. What the ethics commission wrote. Well, when I get off the air, I'll send it to you. <laughs> What the Ethics Commission wrote, so for your here for your uh, watch, your listeners to see, is one of the components of filing a valid Ethics Commission is you have to have personal knowledge. Yes. And what he did was he included a variety of Miami Herald articles as the basis for his complaint and therefore was dismissed. I don't know how you call that a technicality. I call that following the rules and the rules were not followed. It wasn't a, a basis complaint. It wasn't a complaint with basis and it was dismissed. And hopefully it will dis be dismissed at the state. That's my hope. I guess my technicality meant it wasn't about the actual allegations of what you did and how you paid. It was that he had no standing. That's so anyway, um, we have yeah, successfully standing. run out our clock. I hope you will come back because there's some things in the city to talk about. And I really Look kind of want to delve into a lot of those things that you said at the beginning of this interview about um, some of the things the city is doing. And so I hope you will join us again soon. Always. Thank you. Of course. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, Mayor. Glenn.